recap. Go back to what you said for folks who just joined us. As you know, with radio, people are tuning in every minute. At this epic point we reach where the Ford Foundation, George Soros, Media Matters, they're all trying to start a race war. They're all trying to make every issue about the cops using a few bad examples. Uh, it's just so classically communist, so classically gutter, so classically evil, and they're really trying it. I mean, I, and, but it seems like because they have the media and everything ready, they might actually arrest people that are against killing cops soon. I mean, how crazy is this going to get, Larry Klayman? Well, here's how bad it is, and this was the thought I wanted to finish up. And I hope that our friends at Right Wing Watch and People for the American Way and the Southern Poverty Law Center are listening, okay? Because, you know, here it is, guys, and, you know, bend over, okay? The reality is this, is that with an NSA and with a CIA, they can gather all of our information. If they had existed and if King George III had had access to them in the days of the Revolution, our founding fathers would have never made it to Philadelphia. They would have been picked up, arrested, jailed, and executed before they got there to sign the Declaration of Independence. And these lefties who are now in control of our government know this. And they know that, and they've intimidated us. And they're getting people scared so we won't rise up anymore. And I don't advocate violence. I advocate nonviolence a la Martin Luther King, a la Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, but we've got to start doing something. I had to try to do a rally a few years ago, and we only had 300 people show up because people are scared. Uh, but we've got to rise up because the country is going down the drain. Uh, no one in Washington is able or willing to take on Obama. He's won every battle. And, yes, the George Soros is behind Obama. He is a communist. I mean, Soros is a guy. He's Jewish. He's, he, he turned in his, his own people at, at death camps. Uh, he and his father, and profited by it. Uh, and you've got the Farrakhan's in the world, and the, and the Reverend Wright, and the other anti-Semitic, anti-white Christian people out there trying to destroy the world. And no one's lifting a hand. And the American people need to rise up, and, and that's what we're faced with right now. And even the cops, the cops say, and this is pathetic because, you know, we need to protect everybody whether you're black, white, yellow, or whatever. The cops are saying, hey, I'm not going to intervene in these things in the ghettos anymore. Let them kill each other, and we'll just clean up afterwards, because we're going to get blamed for violating civil rights, and we're going to get retaliated against. We'll lose our job. Our family will be out in the cold. So what's the end point? Is the blacks are killing each other in, in, in record numbers, more than ever, and no one can step in. That's right. Stop Crime them. in um, just one area of Maryland after that whole event, it tripled there in Baltimore over a few months because the police started slow rolling. And it's just it's just unbelievable. In closing, I'll say this is a ray of light and hope. Yes, folks know the NSA is there to track and trace and frame people and the rest of it. But we also have the Internet to use it to organize folks. And I see people across the board really waking up right now, saying no to the tyranny saying no to the intimidation, and really understanding what's happening. And I think they've jumped the shark uh, uh, at the Obama administration, saying the veterans are the number one enemy, and they're going to restrict guns of uh, Social Security owners, or Social Security retirees who are gun owners. I think there's a point where people get out of fear and then get into fight mode. I just hope they fight the right way and direct their energy the right way, because... Uh, even though the establishment hates the system that made this country so great, it's very hard to turn off something this vibrant. And they've tried to do it, Larry Klayman, of FreedomWatchUSA.org, uh, but it's going to be a lot tougher than they think. You know, there's that off-quoted passage, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry or array. And I think that's what we see happening. You're right, Alex. I frequently say this. <clears throat> You know, I'm a child of this generation, of Chris Christopherson, who wrote the song, of Janis Joplin, who sung it. Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. At this point, we have nothing left to lose. And doesn't that make us stronger that they push us to this point? It does. They push us to this point. They have. But I want to see it done in a nonviolent way, and we need to rise up in the streets. Uh, Gandhi brought India and South Africa to its knees. Martin Luther King, when you listen to his speeches, I mean, it's like listening to Reagan, even though, you know, he had communist leanings. He, he was not a racist. Uh, 
he respected all people. And right now, what we've got leading the so-called civil rights movement uh, are people who don't. And frankly, the most courageous people in this country are the African-American black conservatives, people like Sheriff David Clark out there in Milwaukee. Yeah, he, he's a great guy. Imagine Alan having Keyes. him as president. Alan Keyes, Ben Carson. I mean, they're being blunt. Okay, They're saying it straight up. It's the white people who are cowering in, in caves right now, and they need to come out, and we all need to work together uh, because we have to have a country which where everybody's treated equally and fairly, and we've got to have a country which is based on freedom and capitalism and the ability to move ahead uh, without uh, getting into a communist state, which is what Obama and Soros and the rest of them want. Uh, Larry Clayman, always powerful interview. Great job with the NSA and the fact that your fight continues. You've had another victory. The media has spun it as a defeat, uh, as they always do to take our hope away. But we know that hope springs eternal. God bless you. God bless you, Alex. Thank you. There he goes, folks. Um, we live in very epic times, and they want to play Muslims off against Christians and vice versa. I know that most Muslims do not want to have wars, do not want to kill people, but our government's run by criminals that make money out of crisis, and they are funding radical Muslims to take over and do horrible things across the Middle East, North Africa, and other areas, Central Asia, and I stand against that. And I just want people to live in peace. You know, I had read about this letter in a Time Life article when I was a little kid, but this weekend I was online doing research on some World War II events, and I came across the handwritten letter in 1940, it's actually mailed in late 1939, to Adolf Hitler seeking peace or someone will, quote, beat you with your own weapon. And it's an admitted letter from Mahatma Gandhi, who was not a big fan of England uh, and, and a lot of other things. You have to understand Hitler was seen as a good guy, even in like you know Time magazine at the time. Uh, but Gandhi sent him the letter and I read it. And he said, listen, uh, you will basically end up losing this and the weapons you're going to use will end up being used against you. Uh, and he basically, in fact, scroll down, I'll read you the whole letter. Here's the full version of the letter, uh, which is uh, the longer of Gandhi's two letters to Hitler. And I've read two of them. So let me see which one this is they found. I told him to search for it. That I address you as a friend is no formality. I own no foes. My business in life has been for the past 33 years to enlist the friendship of the whole of humanity by befriending mankind, irrespective of race, color, or creed. I hope you will have the time and the desire to know how a good portion of humanity owes a viewing living under the influence of the doctrine of universal friendship. View your action. We have no doubt about your bravery or devotion to your fatherland, nor do we believe that you are the monster described by your opponents. But your own writings and pronouncements and those of your friends and admirers leave no room for doubt that many of your acts are monstrous and unbecoming of humanity and dignity, especially in the estimation of men like me who believe in universal friendliness. Such are your humiliation of the Czechoslovakia, the rape of Poland, and the swallowing of Denmark. Yeah, this is the second letter. The first one is probably even the more important one. I am aware that your view of life regards such spontaneations as virtuous acts, but we have been taught by from childhood to regard them as acts degrading humanity. Hence, we cannot possibly wish success to your arms. And then it just goes on to warn him that he will be defeated. In fact, I should do a whole video on these and I'll do that. But the first letter is a lot friendlier before he starts World War II. And you look back and you see how Hitler got 20 plus million Germans killed. And I just want to say to the establishment today, you're not going to get away with what you're doing. I know you think the whole world's yours. You've got this possession, this drive for global domination. It's not going to happen. People are going to rally against you. People are going to fight you. People are going to say no. People are going to resist. And no matter how sophisticated or high-tech your systems are, you will fail. Now, you may succeed in turning the world very evil. You may bring in a great technocracy, but you yourselves, the facts have shown and my gut tells me, 
will be destroyed. You and your children that are creating this world government will never share in the perceived benefits that you've been promoting to your own minions. And that's my only warning to you is that you need to turn back. You need to turn back down. We're not offensively attacking anybody. We are offensively with information trying to stop violence, stop war, stop oppression, stop the promotion of racism, stop the promotion of civil war, stop the promotion of police brutality, stop the promotion of the full spectrum that the globalists use like a palette of paint to create this monstrous masterpiece that they've almost completed. Yeah, they did find the earlier letter that I'll go to your phone calls. It's just hard to read in that format. But this is Mahatma Gandhi to Hitler. Friends have urged me to write to you for the sake of humanity. But I have resisted their request because of the feeling that any letter from me would be an impertinence. Something tells me that I must not calculate and that I must make my appeal for whatever it may be worth. It is quite clear that you are today the one person in the world Think of that, who could have stopped World War II, who can prevent a war which may reduce humanity to a savage state. Must you pay the price for an object, however worthy it may appear to you to be? Will you listen to the appeal of one who has deliberately shunned the method of war, not without considerable success? Anyway, I anticipate your forgiveness if I have erred in writing to you. But to me, the letter is so powerful because this is a guy that freed 500 million people by simply saying, we're not going to pay taxes, British taxes, on salt. We're going to walk to the ocean and collect it ourselves. It's our country. And that's where Bundy Ranch and things like that come in. When we refuse to pay taxes because they're unjust, or our government's illegitimate, when we refuse to submit, that's the real act of war. When we speak out, that's the act of war. When we say no, that's the act of war. When a good person becomes a police officer and upholds their oath and defends good officers, exposes bad officers, that's real war. When you have children in a world this dangerous and raise them up right, that's a war. And yes, Gandhi wrote a lot about violence. He was against offensive violence. He was not against defensive. If someone came to kill you, he was all for the Second Amendment. He defended the Second Amendment because the American left tried to get him to attack it. He wrote letters saying, no, it's a great thing. He was a very intelligent person, undoubtedly. But imagine if Hitler would have listened. How the world would have changed. Hitler had a peace treaty with England secretly. Hitler, who thought he was going to be allowed to take over all these areas. Hitler, who was set up, believed he was invincible, believed he had the deals done, believed his agents and his operatives inside all these different organizations were unstoppable, that he'd infiltrated America and Russia and England. Well, Hitler, you found out that in the final equation, you were given France. You were given Poland. You were given Czechoslovakia. You were given what was left of the Hungarian Empire, Austria. And so Hitler is now known for crippling Germany. Hitler is now known for bringing in the new version of planetary tyranny that adopted all of his stratagems. And I see weak people who admire Hitler because of his snappy Hugo Boss uniforms. And I feel so sad for them. Because the people that admire Hitler weren't there when over a million Germans were drowned in the subways by Hitler. As an act of punishment because they'd failed him. Adolf Hitler was an enemy of the German people. Let's go to Eileen in Montana. Eileen, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. I hope with this expansion and your reach that you start distributing some real environmental info 
information and be the sustainable 